That's Mr. Gromyko proposing to the Security Council that the hearing of the Persian case should be postponed. His proposition was cogently opposed by America's Secretary of State, Mr. Burns. There are 40 nations not represented here. They look to us to give to each one of them the assurance that the doors of the Security Council are open to them to prevent, to present a grievance when they say that grievance threatens international security. If a small government, not a member, files properly and in compliance with the Charter, the declaration that foreign troops are on its soil and interfering with that government, and the governments here represented, any one of them can say, we think there is an agreement, or our information is there is an agreement, and thereby deny to a non-member government even the right to present its case, all confidence in the effectiveness of the Security Council will disappear. Support for Mr. Burns was firmly presented by Britain's chief representative at this meeting, Sir Alexander Cadogan. And another highlight of the long discussions lasting several days was the motion proposed by Hassan Pasha of Egypt. But the small countries today are waiting for your decision because we want to see the big powers respect the treaty obligations. We want the big powers to know that if an independent country does not want to have foreign troops stationed in, on its soil. The, the, the big powers should comply to that. It is only in the light of these observations that I have moved the motion yesterday about uh, asking the representatives of Iran to come here to the bench and explain his case. All those who are in favor of the Soviet representatives' motion will please signify by raising their hands the President announces the failure of the Soviet proposal to postpone. Two in favor, Two in favor not carried. Mr. Gromyko and the other Russians then walked out. Their dramatic exit seems to have caused no obvious reaction at the time, though we can imagine what most of those present were thinking. One good thing, however, emerges from this incident. The Security Council had stood its ground and immediately proceeded to hear the Iranian point of view, which was comprehensively set out by Dr. Hossein Allah. Soviet troops are still in Iran. Iran has suffered and is at this moment suffering from interference in its internal affairs through the intervention of Soviet agents, Soviet officials and armed forces. Iran has no definite and unconditional assurances that these troops will be removed from the whole of our territory by a given date. For these reasons, Iran views with grave concern any delay in the consideration by the Council of the merits of these disputes. For these reasons, on behalf of my government, I request the Council to take up these matters at once and reach, without reference to further negotiations, a solution consistent with the principles of the Charter.